Good day, everyone. My name is Chen Lei Li. I am giving a lecture on behalf of Professor Xue Qiu He. The title of the lecture is Rockbird's Monitoring in Coal Mines. This is one lecture of the series Rock Failure, Behavior, and Control in Deep Mining. The series was proposed by ISRM Commission on Deep Mining. The main presenter is Dr. Xue Qiu He. He is a professor of safety science and engineering, working at the University of Science and Technology, Beijing. Professor He is the winner of the National Outstanding Youth Fund of China. He is a member of the ISRM Commission on Deep Mining, also the chair of the International Committee on Mine Safety Science and Engineering, the president of Zhongan Academy of Safety Engineering. His research area include applied geophysics, risk assessment and emergency management, safety science law, the AI theory and technology of underground engineering safety. I am Zhen Lei Li, an associate professor of safety science and engineering working at the University of Science and Technology, Beijing. I am a young editorial board member of the International Journal of Mining Science and Technology, the Journal of China Coal Society, and the Chinese Journal of Engineering. I am also the guest editor of Minerals. My research interest includes rock burst monitoring and control, applied geophysics, mining engineering, safety engineering, and rock mechanics. The lecture contains the following five parts. Part 1. Introduction of coal mine dynamic hydros. Nowadays, dynamic hydros pose a serious threat to the safety of coal mining, especially in China. When we see dynamic hydros, we normally mean two phenomena. The first one is coal and gas outburst, and the other is a coal and rock burst. As the diagram demonstrates, coal and gas outburst is a dynamic phenomenon which may result in the injection of fragmented coal rock material and rapid release of gas from the working phase. This phenomenon normally occurs in the process of roadway excavation. Rock bursts have occurred in two cases. The first one is in metal mines or tunneling projects. In this case, rock bursts mostly cause damage to the tunnels. A severe rock bursts can even make the tunnel be closed. The second case is in, metal, in coal mines. In this case, we call it rock burst or coal burst. In this case, the rock burst can be disastrous. It can not only cause damage to the roadway, but also cause damage to the walking phase. An example is that happened in in January 20th, 1960, a rock burst happened in South Africa, killed 432 people and damaged 3 million square meters area and ground. Rock burst or coal burst in coal mines is the focus of this lecture. We use rock burst as the terminology. As the figure shows, a rock burst is caused by elastic string energy released in a sudden, rapid, and violent manner from coal and rocks. It is commonly accompanied by an air blast, wind blast, which can disrupt mine ventilation throughout mine equipment and coal fragments, release stretcher gas, and propagate explosive dust into the air. It can also cause gas-related outburst and explosion, etc. A rock burst has characteristic features. The first one is burst news. It means a rock burst normally happens suddenly with no obvious precursors to human eyes. Thus, it is hard to determine the time, location, and intensity of a potential rock burst. A second feature is seismicity. 
A rogue burst is normally accompanied by a ground vibration, and the seismic waves may propagate several kilometers or tens of kilometers, but the duration is generally small. Just as the figure shows, the duration is normally less than 7 seconds, and the main shock is usually 1 to 1.5 seconds. The third feature is highly destructive. It means that it can cause serious, uh, severe, and destructive consequences. Just as this figure shows, it depicts the damage caused by a rock burst. The characteristic damage normally includes floor heave, roof fall, cold wall move, and damage to equipment, for example, damage to the belt, conveyor, and the hydraulic support, etc. These figures show different damage forms caused by rock burst. It can be seen that the consequence is really disastrous. We did an investigation of more than 700 rock bursts occurring in characteristic Chinese coal mines and found that the length of a roadway section damaged by rock bursts is generally less than 100 meters and 10 to 50 meters account for the most majority. The location of damage is correlated with the thickness of coal seams. For example, when we did a case study of uh, 60 rock bursts occurring in sinkholes seams and found that the R section of the coal face and the gobset roadway that is just ahead of the coal face account for the most majority of the damage. While in sickle seams, by a case study of 110 rock bursts, we found that the damage is mostly in the gobset roadway, that is, a certain distance ahead of the coal face. The distance is mostly 10 to 50 meters, but in some cases, the distance can reach several hundred meters. In other words, when compared with seen coal seams, rock bursts happened in sick coal seams uh, move forward. From here, move here. As for the severity of damage caused by a rock burst, we use the sudden deformation of mine openings and the amount of cracked coal material injected to describe the severity. This figure shows the severity of rock burst damage with the thickness of the coal seam. It can be seen that rock bursts happened in thin coal seams are mostly uh, a slat while in medium thick and thick coal seams, rock bursts are more severe. Rock bursts occur in various geological and mining conditions. For instance, the following circumstances all experienced rock bursts. For the geological conditions, from simple to complicated, also even with faults, or faults, and all kinds of coals experience rock bursts. The mine depths from 150 meters to 1500 meters, and the coal seam thickness from thin to extra thick, for example, from 1 meter to 50 meters thick, and the inclination from horizontal coal seams to almost vertical seams and all kinds of roof, for example, sandstone, limestone, etc. The mining methods, including hydraulic, blasting, fully mechanized mining, and topical keeping mining. 
and the goal management, including long wall, short wall, and room and pillar money, etc. This figure shows an example of pillar induced rock burst. The section pillar width varies from 20 meters to 50 meters. In the wage varying sections, 22 rock bursts occurred, and rock bursts mainly caused damage to the golf side roadway and the coal face. This fig shows rock bursts happened in an island pillar walking phase. The walking phase is 90 meters wide and 163 meters long. During the extraction of the walking phase, uh, eight rock bursts happened. The rock burst may cause damage to uh, two roadways, as it shows. This is a case showing rock bursts occurring in four areas. This long wall phase experienced uh, four areas, and 11 rock bursts occurs. The four areas is mainly characterized by a high horizontal stress, which is the main cause of the rock burst. This figure shows an example of a rock burst occurring in fault areas. It can be seen that this lava panel is close to a thrust fault. The distance between the fault and the panel ranges from 75 meters to 200 meters. Since the fault is a thrust fault, thus the tectonic stress is very high. Thus, the high tectonic stress and the reactivation of the fault is uh, the main cause of the rock burst. And it can be seen that a total of 20 rock bursts happened. And uh, they caused damage all to the solid coal set roadway. And each time the golf set roadway is safe. There are two reasons for this phenomenon. The first one is that the golf set roadway is far, far away from the fault. And the second reason, also the main reason, is that uh, this panel used uh, a roadway stake layout method. That is, the golf set roadway is arranged in distressed region, which makes this roadway safe. This is an example of rock burst happening in almost uh, vertical coal seams. As this figure shows, there are two coal seams. Uh, this coal seam is 50 meters thick. And this goal seam is 40 meters thick. The inclination is uh, 87 degree. During the extraction of this goal seam, six rock bursts happened. The hydro situation is severe. It can be seen from the figure that the number of rock burst months increases year by year. We call a rock burst man because the man either experienced rock burst or it is a sign that it, uh, it has a rock burst danger. It can be seen that by 2070, the number uh, overpassed 200, uh, while well, um, by 2021, the number decreased to 140 because some severe rock burst months uh, were closed according to the rules of the government in China. At present, 
and there are challenges and difficulties in the prevention of dynamic hydras. This includes the complicated geological and mining conditions, and the limited knowledge on the mechanism of the dynamic hydras. Also, how to achieve the accurate forecasting and the prediction, how to uh, achieve the effective prevention methods. Part 2 The RM mechanism of coal containing gas. The RM mechanism of coal containing gas is proposed by Professor Xue Qiu He. By onset investigation, he found that uh, the rheological phenomenon of coal containing gas on the site of the gas outburst to reveal the underlying mechanism, Professor He did a series of lab experiments and found that the coal containing gas has a strong rheological behavior. He built the theoretical model and derived the uh, constitutive equation to describe the rheological behavior of coal. Based on the RM theory, he um, built a model showing the process of coal outburst. He divided the uh, outburst process into three regions in space and four periods in time, just as this figure shows. Based on the RM mechanism, Professor Lin Mingdou and Professor Xue Xiu He built an elastic plastic brittle model for the failure of burst prone coal. They use this model to describe the rock burst process. Part 3 Regulations on rock burst. The Chinese government have made great efforts to control rock burst. For example, the government issued two rules that a coal mine must obey to control the rock burst. The first one is Coal Mine Safety Regulations China, which is a renewal of the previous uh, rule uh, and is issued on the October 1st, 2016. The second one is the detailed rules for controlling coal mine rock burst China. It's a new issue in August 1st, 2018. The two rules stipulate that a mine is defined as bursting prone mine if it has bursting prone coal seam. And a coal seam is defined as bursting prone seam if it experiences coal burst or if the coal or its floor and roof has bursting liability and uh, is assessed as having bursting risk. The rules stipulate that a coal seam shall conduct bursting liability assessment if it is at one of the following circumstances. First one, the seam has dynamic phenomena like strong seismicity, sudden floor heave or coal wall move, spalling and injecting of coal and rock material. The second one, the depth of the seam exceeds 400 meters and there are hard and thick structure in the overburden. The third one, the seam of the neighboring mine experienced coal burst or is assessed as bursting prone seam. The fourth one, a bursting prone mine plans to extract new seams or new levels. The Chinese government also issued the national standard for the classification and testing of bursting liability of coal. In the standard, there are four indexes that including 
the dynamic failure duration, the elastic strain energy index, the bursting energy index, and the uniaxial compressive stress. These indexes were obtained in the lab experiments and was used to uh, classify the bursting liability of core. This table demonstrates the detailed information about how to do the lab test, how to calculate each index, and the criteria on how to classify the bursting liability of a core. According to the criteria, there are three categories, namely no burst, weak burst, and a strong burst. The rules stipulate that a cosim shall conduct bursting risk assessment if it has bursting liability, and the results shall be reported to the local government. This means that the government have uh, all the details about the rock burst months, and uh, the government will do the regular inspection on the rock burst months. In this way, the operators of the mines shall must uh, do their great efforts to uh, take every required measures to make the bursting risk of the mine as low as possible. Also, the rules of still stipulate that the comprehensive index method is recommended and the result is classified as no bursting risk weak bursting risk, medium bursting risk, and strong bursting risk. This is the bursting risk of the cosim. It is a little different from that the bursting liability of a core. The rules also stipulate that measures regarding core bursting risk for casting, monitoring and early warning, prevention and control, as well as the personnel protection shall be taken when mining the bursting prone coal seams. This means that when mining a bursting prone coal seams, it is much different from the normal seams, and special measures must be taken to make the uh, safety of the rock burst mines as safe as possible. The comprehensive index method was proposed by Professor Li Mingdou, China. It contains the geological condition influenced index and the mining condition influenced index. This table shows the criteria about the classification of the bursting risk level. This table shows the details about the seven uh, geological condition influenced indexes. There are 11 mining condition influenced indexes as shown in this table. The first uh, six one and the last uh, five ones. It is worth noting that uh, all the indexes in the two tables are the factors that uh, can greatly influence the occurrence of the rock burst. Uh, it was obtained by an on-site uh, investigation about hundreds and thousands of uh, rock burst occurrences. Part 4. Monitoring of rock burst The normally used monitoring method of rock burst Include the first one, pressure monitoring. It uses a set of pressure sensors to be installed in the drilling holes of the body, and the monitoring scope is normally less than 20 meters. It monitors the core body stress. The pressure sensor uh, cannot be recycled; they will be abandoned when after the uh, retreating of the walking phase, it belongs to the 
pumped monitoring. The second one is uh, electromagnetic emission monitoring or EME. We use the EME antenna to monitor. Uh, the operators make the antenna towards the core wall and the electromagnetic emission signal uh, emitted by the core body will be received by the antenna. The monitoring scope is normally 7 to 22 meters. So this is a localized monitoring method. The third one is the acoustic emission or AE monitoring. It uses the AE sensors to be installed on the core wall. It uh, monitors the uh, high frequency and low energy factors. The monitoring scope is normally 30 meters and the A sensor can be recycled. Thus, the A sensor will uh, move forward according to the retreating of the walking phase. It is also a localized monitoring method. The fourth one is microseismic monitoring or MS. It monitors the uh, high energy and low frequency factors. It belongs to the regional monitoring. It uses uh, normally 17 or 32 MS sensors and the sensors will be used to build a monitoring network and then a whole mining area and sometimes even the whole command will be effectively monitored. Actually, there are also some other monitoring methods like the coal drilling cutting method and also the ground pressure monitoring method like uh, roadway deformation. But in this lecture, the MS and EME monitoring is our focus today. Firstly, let's see the macro seismic monitoring. Actually, macro seismic and uh, acoustic emission are the same and they are essentially the seismic waves. The differences mainly lies in the energy and the frequency that uh, they monitored. The theoretical basis for MS monitoring is that uh, MS or AE correlates well with the stress drop and the stress state in time serial, just as figure A shows and by the lab test we know that AE can locate the spatial distribution and evolution of factors. Thus by studying the AE precursors we may obtain the growth that uh, forecasting the uh, core rock failure. Onset MS monitoring is continuous real-time and large-scale. We normally use value plus trend criteria to access the data level of rock burst in time serial. For example, before the occurrence of a rock burst, the values of the MS total energy and even count normally increases. And at the same time, the variation of these indexes become large. The MS is also used to determine the potential rock burst risk areas by analyzing the uh, source location evolution. Normally, when the source of the MS becomes to cluster and uh, concentrate in a certain area, then this area is normally a potential rock burst risk area. The analysis indexes of MS normally include the energy, event count, B value, factual dimension, moment tensor, etc. Recently, the MS based wave velocity tomography technology was developed and was used to detect the stress distribution 
and uh, potential rock burst risk areas around a walking phase. A series of many papers were published that one can infer to get more details. The theoretical basis uh, of this technology is that the P wave velocity is closely related with the stress state of the rock mass. For example, this relation is obtained by the experimental uh, relationship. Um, in the uniaxial and cyclic loading test, when the stress increases, the P wave velocity increases. And when the stress decreases, the wave velocity decreases. The relation correlates very well. There are two kinds of tomographies, namely passive CT and uh, active CT. In passive CT, the MS source is a natural seismicity, while in the active CT, the MS source is, uh, is stimulated by human, for instance, the blasting. And the tomography equipment were developed uh, and was used to conduct these two kinds of tomographies. This equipment was widely used in rock burst commands. It is well known that the drilling cutting method was widely used in rock burst forecasting and uh, risk test. This figure shows the, an example of the comparison of the tomography results and the drilling cutting results. It can be seen that the two results correlate well. In the high velocity areas, the drilling cutting is high, while in the low velocity areas, the drilling cutting is lower. This means that uh, the two results correlate well, and the tomography technique can be used to forecast the rock burst, and this technique is effective. We also provide a comparison between the active tomography and the passive tomography. First, let's see. This figure shows the seismic sources that was used in the passive tomography. And this is the result of the passive tomography. It's uh, the emission of the big mining district. And uh, we select uh, this panel and uh, magnify it. We get this result. And this one is the result of the active tomography. The red dot represents the blasting, uh, i.e. the seismic source. And uh, this one represents the MS um, receiver. Um, by the comparison, we can see that in the active tomography, we can get more detailed information. But on the whole, the two results correspond to well. So both uh, tomography have advantages and disadvantages. For the active tomography, we can get more detailed information but uh, it is time consuming. Well, in the passive tomography, the result is acceptable. And uh, at the meantime, it uses the natural seismic source that is uh, time effective. Therefore, the passive tomography is now widely used in commands. Now, Let's turn to the second method, the EME. By a set of lab tests and on-site observation, it was found that um, coal and rocks, during their deformation and fracture, the electromagnetic signal can be emitted. And this signal can reflect 
the loading state and the fact process of rocks. The EME intensity and pulse count show a positive relation with stress and factor. They increase with the increasing loading rate, fact level, and gas pressure gradient. This figure shows the raw uh, waveform of both A signals and EME signals. It can be seen that the two kinds of signals are basically different. They have different theoretical basis. The indexes of EME that was used for uh, rockboard forecasting is the pulse cons and the EME intensity. We, when it was used, we compare the current value of the two indexes with the safety value. And the equip EME equipment contains two kinds. The first one is the portable ones, namely KBT-5. This equipment was used when the operator takes the antenna and ground to the working face to collect EME data, and then uh, take the equipment back to the office to give an analysis. The second kind is the online device, namely KBD-7. This uses an online way to collect EME data and to do the analysis. So it is very timely. The EME monitoring is a non-conduct, continuous, real-time, and localized monitoring method with a monitoring scope of 7 to 22 meters for one EME antenna. The two figures below shows the uh, use of the method. Normally, we put the antenna just uh, around the walking face, for example, the roadway excavation just behind the walking face. And in the panel retreating, we just put the antenna in the two roadways of the face. And normally, in present, the more than 19% of bursting prone commands in China applied this method and equipment. The forecast accuracy of burst risk is higher than 85%. Just as mentioned above, we use the indexes value and the variation trend to do the risk forecasting and achieve good results in the time serial. But the locating of the EME source hasn't been realized at present. Therefore, our next aim is to solve the problem of locating EME origin, and this is what we are now doing. We made this hypothesis. The first one is the factor of coal destroys the original electric balance in microsurfaces of coal produces charge separation, forms electric field. The second one is the surface vibration induces charge isolation, producing transient current and EME. The third one is the higher the intensity of the deformation and the rupture of core, the stronger the electromagnetic emission. To achieve this goal, we did a series of microscope uh, experiments to test the microscope composition, structure, mechanical and electrical properties of coal and rocks. By doing this, we aim to reveal the EME mechanism in the microscope scale. This is some published results achieved by microscale experiments. We also use the loading instruments to do different rock mechanics experiments 
of different skills and different failure modes. In this way, to further review the mechanism of coal and rock dynamic disasters, we developed the measurement and acquisition instruments, including different EME antennas and AE sensors. We use these instruments to monitor the signals in different loading experiments and give back analysis. We finally proposed the EME origin locating method by using vector composing. The key is the three component EME antenna. The antenna can well identify the components of EME in three different directions, and there is no interference among three components. And the signal can be used to identify the real direction of EME signal by using vector composing method. We use lab experiments to verify the locating method. The idea is to achieve a standard EME origin. We use the long straight current carrying wire as the standard EME origin, just as uh, the figure shows, and we use the EME signal to calculate the wear position, and found that the calculate wear position is very close to the real wear position, which means that the proposed locating method is effective and can be used. On this basis, we proposed the model for locating EME origin. And during the uniaxial compressive test and the Brazilian splitting test of rocks, we use this model to calculate the factors and to locate the factors and achieve acceptable uh, results. The onset instrument was developed and can monitor the three components of EME signal. And now, the field test is being conducted. In the near future, good results may be achieved. Different monitoring methods have different responses to the different stages of core rock failure. Thus, a multi-parameter progressive monitoring method was proposed to effectively and accurately monitor rock burst risk. The comprehensive index method was used for the early forecasting of rock burst risk of the whole coal mine, and MS technology is used for long-term and real-time monitoring to detect the original risk state of rock burst, and EME and stress uh, monitoring is used for the instant warning of rock burst risk states of localized areas. The monitoring of rock burst is complicated. Different methods have different advantages. To better use the advantages of the methods, a multi-parameter warning model was proposed, which, include, which includes uh, MS, AE, EME, pressure monitoring, etc. And a remote online monitoring platform was developed. The engineers, technical staff in the Kuma, and uh, even the scientists from the research institutes can get access to the monitoring data. In this way, the technical service can be provided to the Kuma and the rock burst warning can be achieved timely to make the mine safe. Part 5. Application Cases This figure shows the application of EME in Yuejin coal mine. And before the occurrence of the four rock bursts, we can find the upward trend of the EME intensity 
and pulse count. It showed a good positive correlation. And generally, there was a continuous upward trend of more than five days. This phenomenon can be a precursor of a rock burst. This is an example of the integrated application of EME and MS. The comprehensive index method and the MS method were used to determine the rock burst prone area. Then, EME method was used to monitor the local area in real time. Also, the MS-based tomography method can detect the regional stress concentration area and evaluate the potential rock burst risk area. This gives another example of MS, AE, and EMR joint monitoring. It can be seen that with the increase of mining disturbance, the stress of rock mass is intensified. The energy, frequency, and intensity of MS, AE, and EMR tend to be intense. Then, the occurrence of rock burst occur appears. Thus, the growth trend of MS, AE, and EMR can be regarded as the precursors of rock burst. This gives an example of remote online monitoring platform in Datongko area. The select command is the typical hard roof, hard coal, and hard floor mining conditions. The system of MS and EME were installed, and a multi-parameter mounting platform was established. After the application of the technology, the accuracy rate of the warning increased from less than 80% to 95%. The last part highlights rock birth in commands is even more complicated because of the complex geological and mining conditions. This might will be more severe with increasing mining depths. Thus, much more work needs to be done to clearly review the underlying mechanism to better get onset work birth control. The second, the multi tools including MS, EME, AE, stress, Trading cutting, etc., should be taken to accurately monitor and warn rock burst risk, which is verified by on set experience. Thanks for your attention. The lecture is over. Thanks.